Ashbourne is the southern gateway to the Peak District and lies on the boundary of the old red sandstone of southern Derbyshire and the limestone which surrounds Dovedale and the White's Peak. Although the town lies a short distance away from the River Dove, it commands the approach to Dovedale. It is a colourful and historic town, with a market on Thursdays and Saturdays, but at one time there were also regular livestock markets, several annual horse fairs and even cheese fairs. Probably the most famous feature of Ashbourne is its Shrove Tide football match, an annual game of traditional football, played between the Uppards and Downards, with a leather ball stuffed with sawdust. The only rule is that the ball has to be grounded at either of the two goals, which are three miles apart along the valley where Ashbourne lies. Play starts at 2pm and continues until 10pm, unless a goal is scored after 5pm. There are hundreds of participants, and to describe it as rough would be an understatement. It is a moving brawl which continues through the streets of the town, across fields, and even along the bed of the local stream. The violence involved has led to a few attempts to ban it, but the game has been played here for hundreds of years, and fortunately it still continues. Ashbourne is a nice town and I know it very well because I come here a lot for my work but I also come here a lot in my own time because it's just a really nice place to visit. It's only about 12-13 miles from where I live in Matlock and I come here sometimes just to do my food shopping because it just makes a bit of a change and obviously from Ashbourne there are really nice places to get to and this is where I'm starting my tour today. Today I'm going to be exploring parts of a trail which, in a similar way to the High Peak Trail, follows the course of an old railway line. And that starts just the other side of this tunnel. The London and North Western Railway opened its line between Ashbourne and Buxton in 1899 and closed it in 1966. This line was purchased by the Peak National Park and Derbyshire County Council in 1971 and reopened as the Tissington Trail for cyclists and walkers. The southern end of the trail begins just out of Ashbourne and passes very close to Tissington, Hartington, Dovedale and other attractive places so it is easy to work out an enjoyable day's tour. So let's have a look at some of the Tissington Trail Starting my tour along the Tissington Trail, I headed northwards out of Ashbourne and into the wilds of the Peak District. Three and a half miles on, the Tissington Trail soon came to the former railway station, now a car park, for the village of Tissington one of the prettiest villages in this part of the Peak District. Tissington is largely arranged along a single street, with the old school at the southern end and the hall and church halfway up. Just to the east of the old school, there is a picturesque village pond. Tissington's another place that I visit a lot, but I don't stop here very often. So today is quite nice to actually stop here and look around for a while, because it really is a lovely little village. I do remember visiting the village some years ago during one of the well dressings, but it was absolutely belting down with rain. 
It was busy with people, lots of cars parked in the village, so there was a lot of mud being churned up. So it was like a mud bath through here. But it didn't spoil my enjoyment of this lovely village. And I remember going into the village hall, sheltering out of the rain, and having a nice cup of tea and a slice of cake, and it was lovely, it really was. The village has no less than five wells, and is now mainly notable for its well dressing, which takes place each year on Ascension Day, making it the first Peak District well dressing of the year, and usually one of the best. The village church sits on a mound and has a Norman doorway and font, but was heavily restored in Victorian times. However, it contains the monumental 17th century memorial to Francis and Thomas Fitzherbert, which is well worth a look. Tissington has been the estate village of the Fitzherbert family since the 1460s, whose hall, erected in 1609, stands in the centre of the village. The village is delightfully laid out, with plenty of space and buildings, which were mostly erected in the early 19th century. As can be seen today, Tissington is a very popular place on a summer weekend. What a lovely place Tissington is. It's such a shame that I don't visit this village more often than I do because I live very close by. But it's been really nice coming here today. Well, on to the next place along the Tissington Trail. A short distance on, I came to Alsop on the Dale, a small farming hamlet nestling in a side valley below the Tissington Trail and the A515. The main road once passed through Alsop, but was diverted to save stagecoaches that climb down into the valley and then back up again. As a result, Alsop now enjoys quiet seclusion and only sees traffic en route to or from the nearby village of Parwich. The village is very pretty, with a fine Norman church, which was built in the early 12th century and renovated and extended in 1883. Opposite the church, is a fine old hall, of which parts date from the 17th century.
I'm just passing the tiny village of Biggin, which is just down there. But I'm going to end up there today after I finish my tour. Now, as you know, I normally like to finish all my tours with a drink in the pub. Now, not that I'm a man of routine, but what I'm going to do today is just continue on the Tissington Trail a little bit further because there's not really much further to go now anyway. And I'm going to circle back and end up in Biggin later. soon arrived at Hartington Railway Station, which opened in 1899, about two miles away from the village it served. In common with the other stations on this line, the platforms and buildings were of timber construction. Like all the stations on the line, it was popular with ramblers and had both ladies and a general waiting room with a booking office. However, its distance from the village meant that, when bus services began, it lost much of its local trade. Regular passenger services ended in 1954, but excursions continued until 1963. Freights continued until October of that year, the track to Ashbourne finally being lifted in 1964. The signal box has been preserved as a visitor centre. Well, the Tissington Trail finishes a couple of miles from here, just the other side of that hill at Parsley Hay, where of course it merges with the High Peak Trail. And of course I've done that one recently, so I don't feel it necessary to continue any further. So what I'm going to do now is make my way back slowly, circling round towards Beacon. along which I was walking took me to the quiet hamlet of Hethcote, through which I briefly passed as I headed on towards the next village. I was soon approaching Biggin my final place of visit of today's tour.
Biggin is a farming community located in the highest parts of the limestone plateau of the White Peak. It spreads out gently along a straight minor road that links the A515 to Hartington and is well situated for the Tissington Trail as well as walks around Woolscote Dale and Beresford Dale. Biggin's remote location means that in times past it has been cut off for long periods during harsh winters and sustained only by the old railway line when it was in use. The village was founded in the 13th century and was centred around a grange attached to Garandon Abbey in Leicestershire but there is nothing now visible from this period. Even the church dates from the reign of Queen Victoria, and there is little older than this, with the exception of the Grade II listed Biggin Hall, which is a lovely 16th century building. Even up until recent times, Biggin was an important farming centre for local sheep sales. Following the consolidation of all animal sales to centres such as Bakewell and Derby, its role has considerably diminished, and it now has a much heavier reliance on the tourist trade. The village has a great pub, the Waterloo with its own caravan park behind. Well, as per my normal routine, I will end my tour today with a drink in a pub. And today, I should be enjoying a pint here in the lovely Waterloo Inn, here in Biggin. <laughs>